how do you get electricity on a narrowboat? Hmm, well that's a very good question. Ahoy, and welcome to this narrowboat adventure. Today we're going to talk about electricity. Um, you'll have to bear with me because I'm no expert. I'm only going to tell you what I know, okay? <laughs> there are two kinds of electricity. There is 240 volts and there is 12 volts. Uh, so 240 volts would come from shoreline. So this is the simplest as far as narrow boats goes and that would be if you pay for a mooring you can quite often get a plug that comes out of the ground and you plug it into your boat and that gives you normal electricity like in any other house. Um, this is a great thing as far as convenience but it can actually be really bad for your boat. By using the 240 volts it kind of turns your, your boat into a giant magnet and it just means that the hull can be uh, can rust a lot quicker so that is one of the sort of cons as far as shoreline electricity goes then there is 12 volts so there's many different ways of getting 12 volt electricity but it will always be stored in your batteries so most boats will have a starter battery which goes to the engine and then leisure batteries I think we have two leisure batteries um, and then the leisure batteries get charged up and uh, then you use them and the electricity comes around your boat um, from what I've been told, you're supposed to try and keep your batteries at least half charged, otherwise it's not very good for them. Uh, so, what kinds of things can you do to charge up those leather batteries? Well, most people, in fact all people, will be using their engines to charge the batteries. If not their main source, it is always going to be a source, because whenever you run your battery to move the boat, um, or sorry, run your engine to move the boat, you're going to be charging the batteries, which is obviously just like a nice byproduct that any extra energy that's coming off of the, en the engine is going into those batteries. Um, but many people will just have that as their only source of energy and just run their engine for like an hour a day. Um, and then of course there are other methods such as solar panels which people often have on their roof and they give a trickle charge throughout the day and some solar panels now are getting so good that they can actually take charge off of the moon which I think is really cool. We're getting solar panels soon and so that's very exciting for me. Um, solar panels can be really great um, in the summer and I imagine also okay in the winter but obviously the days are shorter so you're not going to get as much of a charge from a solar panel in the winter. Um, they are getting much cheaper though, so they're a really good option if you're on a boat. Um, then the other option I know of is wind power. Now the wind power, the, the turbines are very expensive and some of them are quite noisy I've, I've heard. Like when I've been walking past boats I've heard them and they can be quite noisy. Um, and the thing basically with them is because they are so expensive and they really only work when you have 5 miles an hour of wind. So most people that I've heard talking about it have said once you've saved up enough for a wind turbine you're probably better getting solar panels with that money because basically the wind turbines don't always work whereas the solar panels even if it's only a little bit in winter will always be charging and that's better than having periods of time when it's not charging I suppose. Um, but then if anybody has got any wind turbine and would like to share their story do please do so in the comments because I'd love to hear about that and there is a sort of Kickstarter going around at the minute as well where there's somebody who wants to mass produce this device he's made where you can attach it to your multi-fuel stove and that basically takes the sort of excess heat energy and turns that into electricity um, this obviously is not a known quantity because it's something that's kind of just been invented but I think it's very interesting and I'm looking forward to seeing what happens with that um, yeah so 12 volts can charge uh, lights water pumps uh, headphones tablets most things um, but it can't charge things like laptops and, and bigger things anything that would have a normal wall plug probably it can't charge unless you can also charge it with like a USB yeah, that's a good way to know like my my, my laptop is I think 19 volts um, so what people will get is an inverter and that's just a machine that will turn the 12 volts into 240 volts so that you can use a normal plug and charge everything else on your boat um, 
yeah, I think that's everything that I can think of to tell you about electricity on a boat. If you have anything you would like to add, I would love to hear it because as I say, I'm no expert. If you would like to join us again on this narrowboat adventure, please do subscribe and we look forward to seeing you very soon. Thank you. Bye.